You're watching Movie Guides Backstage Pass. I'm Cheryl Crisp. Who, what, or where do you turn to when you're feeling sad, anxious, discouraged, or lonely? Did you know that the Bible has more than 7,000 promises from God, many of them encouraging and full of hope? We're here in Washington, D.C. with pastor and best-selling author Max Licato to hear about his brand new book, Unshakable Hope, Building Our Lives on the Promises of God. What if you could give someone hope with just the click of a button? What if it was your neighbor, a close friend, or someone you don't even know? Everyone needs hope. The kind of hope that can only come from the promises of God. Hope is hard to come by these days. We've never been more educated, connected, entertained, yet more people than ever want out. How could this be? People are dying for lack of hope. But there is hope. God has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. Max, the suicide rates in America have increased 24% since 1999. And last year worldwide, a million people committed suicide. Why are people losing hope? I really believe that at the core of um, the issues of depression and, and suicide, uh, there has to be an introduction of hope. There really has to be. Most of us will benefit and be blessed by simply an infusion of truth. Uh, and, 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 and the truth of, of Scripture uh, is, comes to us from God who cannot tell a lie. And consequently, we can hang on to these promises. You know, the truth of the matter is sometimes we can go through a period in which we are simply exhausted. We have, you know, back to back to back challenges. Uh, we have storms one right after the other. And we look up and we say, you know, I made it through them, but I'm still worn out. Or I'm still discouraged. Uh, maybe it's a student going off to college or, or maybe it's somebody who's buried their parents. Uh, you know, I talked to a guy the other day whose father passed away and then within a month his mother passed away and all that came with it. And he was just so discouraged. He said, I know they're in heaven, but I'm still sad. And I said, well, of course you're sad. Number one, your world is turned upside down. But number two, you've written a huge check on your emotional account. So I say all that to say, I think if somebody said, I'm just really discouraged, I might say, are you replenishing yourself? Are you taking time? Are you sleeping? Are you eating? <laughs> are you exercising? And most of all, are you praying? Are you reading the Bible? Are you getting some good thoughts in your head? I wanted to find a way to give people hope. I'm a pastor, and so I'm look, always looking for little nuggets, you know. And, uh, and I've realized through the years that a promise from the Bible really touches someone's heart. I think it's supernatural. If I say to you, you know, there's a promise in the Bible that says, boy, people just kind of perk up. But I didn't know there were 7,000. And so when I started researching a series of lessons I could teach on the promises in the Bible, I was careful not to say all the promises in the Bible because I won't live that long to cover all that. But I wanted to pick out some that were uh, representative. Uh, for, for example, the, the, I think if I was really to be pressed, my favorite might be Psalm 30 and verse 5. Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I like it because it's so honest. You know, it, it, the weeping happens. It happens. It happens for moms. It happens for a businessman. It happens. And so the Bible is always honest about the presence of sorrow. But, but the Bible also says uh, that, that sorrow may have the day, but it won't win the day. And, and that's the hope. And that's the kind of promises that you find in the Bible. I'll never forget when somebody told me, Max, just because you have a thought, you don't have to think it. <laughs> it's not like a nice little Texas right. colloquialism, does it? That's true. That's true. Uh, and, and we don't realize that just because the thought comes into our mind, that doesn't mean that we're supposed to allow it to take up, take up residence. Um, there, there is a battle. There is a battle. And uh, the devil wants to take hold of all of our thoughts. Uh, but 
But he doesn't have to win. We have the promise of God that he will help us. He will help us manage our thoughts. We have the presence of God. The promise says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, so we have God himself helping us. Now, it's not an easy battle. You know, I mean, just uh, just yesterday, I found myself dealing with some discouragement and and uh, thinking, now, why am I still discouraged about this? Why can't I move on? And I just I just realized, you know, it's it's going to be a battle till we get to heaven. It's going to be a battle, but we can't give up. We take up the armor of God. We take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and and we and we do battle and press on.